iOS 17 has all sorts of amazing new features, and after trying all of them out, I wanted to show you some of the most fun features that you just have to try out on this new update. FaceTime saw a pretty fun update. You can actually use gestures to trigger effects during a FaceTime call. There are eight different gestures that you can use, so let's take a look at them. The first one which you just saw is the laser effect, which you can do by doing two rock on symbols with your hands. If you couldn't tell, this is basically the same effect that you can do with text messages in the messages app. The second one is a heart, which you literally just make a heart with your hands and you'll see the effect happen within your hands. Next up would be a single thumbs up, which if you would guess would be a thumbs up emoji. However, if you do two thumbs up, you'll have a fireworks effect. Next up, you can do a thumbs down emoji, just like the thumbs up one. And again, if you put two thumbs down emojis instead of one, it gives you a very sad scene, which is a rainy, cloudy day. Next up, a peace sign will give you a balloon effect. This is the same one that's sent usually with happy birthday texts. And lastly, with two peace signs, congratulations, you've got confetti. Now, if you don't want to actually do these hand gestures, you can still accomplish these effects by just tapping and holding on the preview of your image on your phone, and it gives you the same options for the effects that you can just tap on, which in this case, I'll do the lasers again. This is my favorite one, if you couldn't tell. Now, I've had a lot of fun using these effects and these gestures on FaceTime. I think you'll love it too. If for whatever reason you're calling someone and they don't answer, another feature to know as well on FaceTime is you now have the ability to leave video voicemails. So instead of just getting the unavailable, you can actually leave a message for someone by recording yourself in the FaceTime app. And actually, speaking of leaving a message, on regular phone calls on iOS 17, we also have a brand new feature, which is live transcripts for voicemails. So if you don't answer a call and you let it ring through to your voicemail, you can leave that page up. It'll give you a live view of what the person is saying as they leave the message. This is a great way to monitor your calls just to see what it is that the person is calling about. And to be honest with you, it's just something that's really fun and interesting to watch in real time as it happens. Side note, this is actually very similar to another new feature in the Messages app, which is that we also now have transcripts for audio messages. So instead of having to listen to audio messages, which you still can if you want to, you will now have text below them showing what it was that was said in the audio message in case you can't listen to it. And while you're in the Messages app, another feature I would definitely not miss is the ability to use live stickers. This is something my wife and I have been having a lot of fun with because you can go into your Photos app, find any live photo, tap and hold on the subject of the photo, and then turn it into a sticker. This is already a feature previously, but the difference is that, again, using a live photo now means that your stickers are gonna be live stickers, meaning they will move after you place them down. You can also outline your stickers now with different effects like outline, comic, puffy or shiny. Now, if you didn't catch it previously, that live transcript actually did give you a bit of a sneak peek at what I was gonna talk about next, which is personalized phone call screens. This gives you the ability to create a personalized screen that comes up anytime you call out to one of your contacts, or alternatively, you can change your contact screen as well. So now you can have personalized and custom screens come up whenever you have a friend or family member call you, instead of just that generic screen that just showed their name. And there's a lot of customization to be had here, and best of all, it's very fun and very easy to do. You just want to open up your Contacts app and then select the person that you want to customize. At the top of their page, you'll see a new button that says Contact Photo and Poster. And then from here, once you press that, this basically works in the same way as the lock screen customization does that was introduced in iOS 16. That means that you can have multiple options for profile pictures or posters whenever someone calls you and easily switch between them without having to delete or restart on them. And you have three options when it comes to creating these custom screens. It can either be a photo, a memoji, or monogram, which just means text. If you choose to do a photo, that is probably the most versatile one because you have all sorts of different effects that you can add to the photo that change the coloring, make the subject black and white, or can put you on either a solid or a gradient background. It does also have the same depth effect that we've had on lock screen as well, meaning that you can have something like the top of their head or the top of their hair 
barely covering their name, just to give it a bit of a 3D effect. You can also customize the text by changing the font, the color, and the sizing of it. So I would definitely encourage you to go into your contacts app and change up these settings for anyone that you might receive calls from or make calls to frequently. It just makes it a bit more fun to see a bit of someone's personality or a bit of their style when they call you instead of just a generic screen. Probably my favorite new feature is called standby. This basically gives a whole new life to your phone when it's not being actively used by turning it into a display that has customizable widgets when you've got it plugged in. To activate standby mode, you just have to plug it in or connect it to a MagSafe charger and then put it horizontally on its side. And doing this when your phone's not in use basically means that you'll have a much easier and more visual way to talk to Siri or use it as a bedside clock, a photo frame, a calendar, a smart home hub, or a whole list of other things. You can customize these widgets by just holding down on one when standby mode is activated, and you basically have access to all of the widgets that you'd have access to when your phone is unlocked on your home screen and that includes Apple's native apps and third-party apps as well. It is also worth it to note that on iOS 17, widgets are now interactive as well, meaning that you can press buttons within a widget without having to open the app separately. So you can use these widgets from within standby mode to play or pause your music or check off some reminders. And it does work a little bit differently depending on which iPhone that you have, so keep that in mind too. That just means if you have a newer iPhone, which is a 14 Pro, or up to the 15 Pro, those devices have an always-on display, meaning that when you toggle standby mode, it will stay on in perpetuity. However, if you have anything that's less than a 14 Pro, like the 12 Pro that I have, you will have to trigger standby mode to open and show the display whenever you want to look at it. It won't always be on. But it is very simple to turn it on. There's really three main ways to do it. You can press the lock button, tap the screen, or my favorite way to do it is just by nudging the table that your phone is sitting on. Now, if you do plan on turning your phone into a bedside display by using standby mode, another great feature of it is that it does have night mode. What that means is that the display is going to automatically tint itself to a deep red color whenever it's in a very dark room. That way it's not going to be too bright and illuminate a room or wake you up while you're sleeping. And if for whatever reason you don't like the red tint, you can turn it off by disabling night mode in the settings app. Turning off standby mode is as simple as unplugging your phone or picking it up from being horizontal. Now the last thing I wanted to touch on that got a lot of new features is AirDrop. Hear me out, I know AirDrop doesn't really sound like a fun feature, but with the changes that they've made in iOS 17, they've made it very fun to use this and it's definitely something that you'll want to try out yourself and not miss. Firstly, using AirDrop, we do have a brand new feature which is called Name Drop, meaning that you can easily share your contact information with new people by simply putting the top of your iPhones together at the same time. This will bring up that custom poster that you made using the Contacts app for your own contact information, and it gives you the ability to share whatever information you want with them wirelessly and much easier than we've been able to before. Now, AirDrop has a few new features. This is just one of them. However, what they all have in common is this new animation that plays whenever you're using this feature where you touch the phones together. Frankly, to be honest with you, the best way I can put it is that whenever you do this, it just feels magical. The animation that Apple made to use this new AirDrop feature is nothing I've ever seen before. It basically creates a ripple effect on both your screen and whoever you're transferring information to screen at the same time. It, it looks like they're connected, basically. And you get this wonderful haptic feedback, which unfortunately I can't really relay over video, but when you're holding the phone, it looks and it just feels magical in your hand. And it actually gives you a new notification as well on the top of the screen of whichever phone is receiving the information. This is a big upgrade from what it was previously where you had to be stuck in a menu. This time around, it just shows at the top of the screen as it's downloading and it'll let you know when it's complete. You can also use the same motion or gesture to trigger share play as well, meaning that touching your phones together, you can listen to music, watch a movie, create playlists, or do a whole slew of different things simultaneously with your friends or with your family. So there you have it. Those are the most fun to use features that I've found on iOS 17 so far. Now, if you found this video useful or helpful in any way, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you did enjoy this video, I really think you'll enjoy this one too. Thank you for watching.